I've been trying to get a pothole in front of my house fixed for the last five years. Been down to City Hall, talked to the mayor about it, talked to everybody. They just don't fix it. Now, they do fix some of them, but the streets are in bad shape. Imagine if there were a powerful high-tech bonding agent specifically designed to bond dirt, a sort of dirt glue. Well, that's what Chris Ryder and the folks at Dirt Glue Enterprises in Wakefield, Massachusetts, have come up with. There are many applications for his product, but the one we're most interested in tonight is pothole glue, a spin-off of the original Dirt Glue product that promises to fill up and seal potholes on the road and in your driveway, all in less than 15 minutes. In fact, just before he came into our studio, Chris was fixing up our My TV parking lot. Take a look. This is a pothole glue, which was a spin-off of uh, Dirt Glue Polymer Emulsion. Pothole glue is just a dry blend in a bag. The, uh, the bucket contains recycled asphalt. The pothole glue is going to be mixed with the recycled asphalt. Once it's thoroughly mixed, a little bit of water will be added. Blend it together, much like cake mix. Now we're taking the, uh, the mix, the dry, the dry mix that's been uh, wetted and blended thoroughly, and we're just going to dump it in the hole. That's it. It's as simple as that, just like making a cake. With me is the man you just saw with the magic product, Dirt Glue Chief Technical Officer, Chris Ryder. Chris, welcome. You said it's just like making a cake, maybe not quite as tasty. That's true. But certainly... But very effective. Very effective. What makes this product effective? And I guess we need to start by you telling me what the product actually consists of. Well, for, first of all, the product, um, the, the base is recycled asphalt when we're talking about a pothole mix. But what holds it together is dirt glue and a catalyst. And if, if, we, if we were to just use dirt glue plain, there's a block of dirt that's been held together with uh, the dirt glue product. And you can see it's pretty tough. So no this dirt, here, this no was crack. dirt. This was that's loose just soil. Plain, loose soil. You put the dirt glue. Yep, the dirt glue is this. You uh, bonded white, it all together, and now it's as hard here. as a brick here. That's correct. Okay, you brought some of the dirt glue mixture with mm -hmm. you kind of looks like milk here. Yep. This and is al almost as harmless as milk. Doesn't feel like anything either. Yep. Smells like smell, like paste. It reminds me of like art glue. class in fifth grade okay. or something okay. like that. How did you come up with this product? Uh, it's kind of a long story. My wife's a chemist and um, some of her associates were talking about some polymers and maybe we could do something in dirt. And I had been doing uh, exporting of heavy equipment to Central America, and I thought of taking it to Central America, and after I gave it some more thought, I realized there was just uh, plenty of dirt right in my own backyard. Why bother going to Central America? There's construction going on all over the United States right now, and plenty right here in New England, so let's concentrate here. And we started gluing dirt together, and... From there, it almost became an accident, you told me, about how well it works yep. with the asphalt. Yeah, uh, one of my associates didn't think that it would stick to asphalt because almost nothing sticks to asphalt. Um, new asphalt doesn't stick well to old asphalt. Uh, they put all types of uh, emulsions and petroleum products. They paint the asphalt when they're going to put uh, new asphalt over old asphalt. And it, it still doesn't work very well. So just as a, on a whim, we uh, made up a tub of dirt glue and dumped it on a parking lot and tamped it down and then later on we went back with a diamond saw and cut some pieces out and tried to break them apart. We couldn't break them apart. We brought them to a couple of asphalt companies and uh, asked them, you know, what their opinion was and they thought they could break it. They'd take the piece and, and it was glued together, something like that. They'd put it in a vise and start twisting on it with a pair of pliers or vice grips or channel locks and all they do is mash the asphalt and they never break the bond. So then we kind of knew we had something, so we started experimenting with just plain asphalt rather than dirt, just used asphalt, waste, basically a waste product. And it worked so well, there's a sample of a pothole, if you can picture that, in the hole in the, in the uh, asphalt surface. And we were talking about strength and durability earlier. You were telling me that uh, some of your stronger asphalts can maintain a pressure of 600 pounds per yeah, square six inch. Six or 700 PSI is... And with this dirt glue, that, that, this is that's now... typically exceeding 2,000 PSI. So it's about three times the strength of conventional asphalt. You know, I remember the $6 million man, bigger, stronger, faster. This there is the go. concrete or asphalt version, almost as strong as yeah, concrete. Yeah. 
it's pretty tough. If you took a piece of asphalt that thin, that's only about an inch thick, and you whacked it a few times with a hammer, you'd definitely break it. You'd definitely have uh, crumbling a, off a, a, a good-sized dent. But you can see, other than a couple of little chips that came off because it wasn't compacted well. And I imagine there's, there's if you no took damage. The, the same thickness of asphalt with a hammer without the dirt glue. Yep. You'd probably put the hammer right through Oh, you it. would. You'd, you'd, you'd dent it after the first one or two hits, and after two or three hits, it would snap in half. So this okay. dirt glue product right now, what is it most widely used for? Uh, erosion control, bank stabilization, capping stockpiles on construction sites. That's what it was originally designed for, and that's kind of our bread and butter. This was uh, something that we just fell into, and it seems to be a really good product now we just need appropriate marketing so that we can get people aware of it and get it out there and get it used and let's get make people aware of how environmentally safe this product actually is yeah d dirt glue is um, has been declared by the EPA as non-hazardous and in order to do that it had to go into some significant testing and it exceeded all the test criteria to be classified as non-hazardous spills are not reportable DOT placarding is not required to transport it it can be shipped by air, sea, or land, no restrictions. And um, it, there's, there's no VOCs, there's no uh, harmful vapors coming off. It's not an asphalt product, so we there, know there's the, no the oils. cleanup is very easy. The cleanup is just with water, plain Spray water. Down. Yep. This is a local product. I mean, this is right in our backyards in Wakefield, Massachusetts. Yep. You told yep. me you're selling our this dirt glue. Our production facility is actually in Amesbury. In Amesbury, yep. okay. You're selling the dirt glue to dozens of other companies, but as far as you know, there's no one else out there marketing their own competing product. Right. It, there, there's, there's no dirt glue or dirt glue equivalent in New England, and there's certainly no one probably in the world that's doing this with this product. It sounds like uh, a majority of your customer base would be commercial. But uh, it, at least initially, I, I think commercial is probably the, the much bigger uh, client base because some people aren't going to have equipment to build something like this. Or, but everyone or, or, will or have like the this. ability to do what you did outside That's in our correct. parking lot, yep. more a, sort of a, a do-it-yourself kit. Sure. Sure. If someone needed to do some work uh, in their driveway or in wherever they needed it, they, they could, could come buy, see you and what would happen. pound bucket, and the, do we have instructions in the bucket? And like I said, it's as simple as cake mix. It's actually simpler because cake mix has several ingredients. We only have two. We have recycled asphalt and the uh, pothole glue. That's so it. Someone who, a homeowner who maybe goes through the sealing of their driveway uh, every year and, and the paving of it every so often, why wouldn't they come and think about this product right I, here? I would think they would. I think the only reason they don't come now is because they're not aware of the product. So we need to get the word out there. Would this... If I, if I were to seal my own driveway with this mm -hmm. pothole, the, the dirt glue product, how often would I have to continue to well, apply if, that? If you're talking about just sealing it, if you were just to spray a coat on, you would probably want to do it annually. But, it, but if you were to do a pothole repair, if you, if you had a, an older driveway and you had, you know, it had a bunch of cracks in it and in between some of the cracks, some of the pieces had come out, if you replaced the pieces, the missing chunks, filled the potholes with this product, the potholes would last longer than the rest of the driveway. Okay, let's talk about uh, the cost of some of these applications. Okay, the the 50-pound uh, pail is uh, about $24. How about the length of time it takes? I mean, we saw you out there, 15, maybe 20 minutes. Yeah. Is that is that standard? Yeah, 10 to 20 minutes. I, I think two, two people, if they knew what they were doing, could repair a pothole in 10 minutes. What's the curing time on it? At um, 40 degrees, it will cure in about 45 minutes if you use the right amount of water. If you use too much water, you increase the curing time. And at room temperature, say 70 degrees, it will cure in about 20 minutes. Okay, and you mentioned that when the temperature outside is at or near freezing, it was... Yep. And, and it's the same thing with dirt glue without the catalyst. If, if, we, if we try to mix dirt glue into uh, soil and, and we mix it in at a depth like this, that might be two and a half inches, it's going to take days or weeks to cure all the way to the bottom. That doesn't mean you can't drive on it. It's solid enough to drive on, but it's not completely hard. If the temperature goes down, the, the time to, for full cure to complete depth is going to go up exponentially as the temperature drops. But with the catalyst, we've eliminated that uh, slow curing time. Okay, let's go to the phone lines. John in Quincy, you're on my TV Prime. John, are you there? Yeah, I don't. 
good, John. What's on your mind tonight? I was just kind of angry at the potholes in Quincy Center in general. Yeah, potholes are something that uh, none of us like. Have you hit one recently? I actually did, and I got a flat tire in my mother's car. I'm sorry to hear that. John, thanks for the call. Good luck on the roadways. I want to know how this is affected by the elements. We're up here in New England. We're getting snow. We're getting rain. We're getting wind. Is this impenetrable, um, so to speak? Snow, rain, and wind won't hurt it. But li like, like any pavement product, it's only as good as the base. If you have a weak base, it, it's going to fail sooner than if you have a very good base or a very good subgrade underneath the surface. Okay. What about some of the applications your company is involved with in controlling dirt? Talk about those. The, the dust. Ap applications the dust. other than the pothole. In, Absolutely. In other words. Okay. Um, th this product can be sprayed on a very light coat, and it'll just control dust. And there's actually a piece of the product here. You can see what it's like when it dries. This is not on dirt, obviously, or mixed in dirt. It's just that, that was made by just pouring some on the surface of the desk and then scraping it up with a razor blade afterwards. And it has a rubbery or almost yeah. like a skin-like yeah. feel to it. And, and that's, that's one thing we use it for. We use it for stockpile capping. If, if you could picture something like this over the surface, you know, a, a huge pile of soil that's been pushed up when they're going to do a, a subdivision or a, a commercial building site or something, usually you see the big piles of dirt. It'll prevent dust when it's dry and you have a windy condition, so you'll eliminate uh, windborne erosion. And of course, you can picture that thing just shedding water like you had a plastic tarp over the soil. It'll prevent the uh, fines from washing out of the soil. You won't have mud and sediment all around the bottom. You won't have any sediment going into the catch basins, the drainage swales, or even into the wetlands. It'll basically replace silt fence. If you think about most of the uh, construction sites you go to now, you see the black silt fence staked out all the way around to trap the soil that, that uh, runs off the site when it's uh, rainy. That's kind of reactive because what, what you're doing is you know there's going to be erosion, so you're putting something to catch it after it occurs. If you had a skin on the surface, you wouldn't have the erosion it in the first place. It would never occur in the first place. That's exactly right. You've got an amazing product here. Thanks for sharing it with us. Thank you. My thanks to Chief Technical Officer Chris Ryder of Dirt Glue Enterprises. For more information on Dirt Glue, log on to the company's website at dirtglue.com. A final look at your weekend forecast when my TV Prime returns.